Thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode. You know what Trade Coffee is? I don't know. Your hair's freaking me out. Okay, so there is a rarely referenced way of making whiskey. It's called the Queen's Cut. So I'm gonna drop it into the distillery and talk to Emma. What are we doing, Emma? We are distilling bourbon queen share right now. The queen share. So I've heard Queen's Cut, I've heard Queen's Share. Same thing? Queen's Run. There's a queen involved, we know that. Yeah. What's the simple explanation? Like, how would you describe, what, what would you say to define what a queen's cut is? Yeah, so there are a few different ways that you can do it, but what I do is I dump all of the faints from the second distillation bourbon run. What are faints? Faints are the tails and head cuts. So basically the things that you don't want to keep. The heart cut is basically what you want to be able to put into a barrel. Mm -hmm. The beginning things that yeah. first come off the still, those are the heads. And the last things that you come off the still, those are the tails. And you can put those together and those are called faints. And then I just fill up the still with them and I run it like a normal pot still distillation. It's basically a blend of the stuff that didn't make the cut the first time and somehow this turns out good? Yeah, and it can create a great blending agent in the future once it's aged, because it is just so smooth and like a lighter version of maybe what you put into the barrels originally. Okay, bye. bye. Talk about obscure, man. This is obscure. Yeah, even distillers who do this for a living the queen's cut, the queen yeah. share, it's cool, but it's so rarely done. And your ability to A-B compare is almost impossible. Sure. Unless maybe you get to try some stuff that we're making someday. Okay, so let's do this. First, let's establish clearly the queen share in modern day whiskey making, even hardcore whiskey drinkers, it's not really a thing thing. Not really. Some distilleries do it, some don't, some do variations of it, more commonly done in the brandy industry. Right. This is only the case right now in the case of double distillation products. Okay. The way that I'm gonna talk about first, most people do, which is low waste, get the most you can right. out of a run, It's right? just efficiency. If you don't know what a cut in a distillation process is, just imagine a giant water hose full of nothing but whiskey, mm -hmm. and you are emptying out that water hose. The very first things that come out of that water hose, that's going to be the four shots and the heads. The middle section, that's the hearts, the heart cut. That's what most people want. And then the last thing to come out of that water hose is going to be the tails. Mm -hmm. So, in a first cut, where you're taking it from a beer proof of like eight, 10 to 12, mm -hmm. up to your first distillation run, yeah. you're gonna keep everything you possibly can on that first run. Right. So the first run, mm -hmm. this is a stripping run. Right. Right. Whiskey is distilled multiple times. So the first time you put the wash in there, right, right, which is the fermented mashed ingredients, the mash bill. But the stripping run, you're just trying to get all of the alcohol collected. Right. That's the first distillation. So the first distillation, you drop this, maybe the very beginning four shots, but you're gonna keep the heads and the hearts and the tails. Yep, and the stripping you're run. You're just keeping everything you want in that first stripping run. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna move to what the distillers call the uh, spirit run. So you're gonna cut the four shots completely. The heads. You're gonna cut part of the heads. Yep. Those are two different things. Then you're gonna keep the heart section and then you're gonna cut the tails. So that means here, you may have started with something like a, you know, 150 gallons worth of beer. Right. And ended up with like 10 gallons to 15 gallons of heart cut after two distillations. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of loss. Right. So what will happen in the queen's chair is they don't throw that away. The tails. The tails. Yeah. They'll keep that. Mm -hmm. Now, all the other differences are what happens next. Mm -hmm. What they do next with it changes by the distillery and by the industry. Yeah. Typically, for people who are just looking to make the most out of their production, right. they will take this and they'll put it back in right here and add it to the next spirit run. Mm -hmm. And so it can be like, 80 to 50% a new spirit run right. and you know 20 to 50% the leftover tails from the last run. Mm -hmm. Now when you do that you effectively triple distilled yeah. that one part, batch mixed in. Part of the whiskey was triple distilled. That's typical in the whiskey industry. Just right. make the most of what you can off of all the products. Mm -hmm. That tends to sort of according to people who have tasted it which we're going to even and kind of smooth out some things. Some including us mm -hmm. now, will take that and just keep collecting those faints until they reach a quantity yes. where you can do a run of just faints right. and take your part cut yep. from only a faints run. 
Daniel, uh, do you drink coffee? I do. We both really like a coffee. Lot. We drink it a lot. Yeah. Uh, but how often are you going back to the same coffee over and over? Oh, um, a lot. Right. It's the coffee rut. Until I get to a shop and someone tries something new and I'm like, oh, I should do that. Yeah. And then I never remember. Yeah, there's like tons of amazing coffees out there. Uh, and much like what we suggest to people in whiskey, like explore stuff that is so easy to just slip into like the same old thing over and over. Trade coffee exists so you can explore some of the nation's best coffee roasters, pulling in some of the like, finest coffee beans from around the world, and then mm -hmm. sending it to your door, but only after you take a very simple quiz so you can dial in the preferences so they're most likely sending you stuff you're really going to enjoy. They also have this really cool thing called the first match guarantee. So they're gonna send you a bag of coffee, and if you don't like that, they're gonna send you a different bag for free. Which one do you want to try first? All three. Ooh, that's zesty. Right, the next Temple one. coffee. Temple coffee. Guatemalan. Guatemala. This has Fruity. more body. This has more body in it. Yes. Madcap Coffee Company. Rich and classic. Mm. So. I really like this. This is a fun sponsorship. This is good coffee. So if you're watching this, you get the first bag free when you sign up, and okay. there's a uh, link in the description below Ooh. to take the quiz. So go do that now. <laughs> So let's taste the results of the queen share keeping it separate. So effectively what yeah. we have to compare is three ranges of a normal bourbon cut, or okay. cut, okay. to three ranges of a bourbon queen's share. As far as we can tell, there's no, the earliest mentions of things like this yeah. probably had to do with rum. When a, a guy has a, a vessel of rum and he's pouring it out for people on the boat, like, mm -hmm. there's always the dregs left after everyone's had their share. Yeah. That was called the queen's share. And he would sometimes hold on to it and keep all until it added up to its own thing, and then that That's, was all his. It's the something extra, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, pour one out for the homies. Okay. It, it's, it, it varies from industry to industry. For my homie, the queen. Yeah, yeah, my homie, the queen. So what I hear you saying is, there's no obvious, this is the history and yeah. what it means and there's, there's kind of variations. It's like the origins of whiskey history. When did it start? Well, okay, I want to sip through pretty quickly, right. all the bourbons only. Okay. You ready? So, so starting at the highest proof, yeah. tiny sips, because this is 138, that's where all the grain shows up. Dust and corn and agriculture. It's and really good though. And the green grass, but not, not resiny. And for me, it, uh, the fruitiness comes across as like a jammy fruit. Mm -hmm. Made it's from fruit, it's preserves. Yeah, yeah it's fruit preserves. All it. right, moving straight down to the 120. Wow. So we drop 20 proof. Mm -hmm. Already you can see the vegetal note showing up in that one. You're finding that vegetal note more than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm finding more agricultural and, and dustiness. It's less fruity. Less fruity, but way more dense sugars. Mm -hmm. And it's, then the aftertaste is where it first starts to hint at that yeah. green vegetal note. It's less of a fruity preserved sweetness for me, and it's getting more towards a honey mm -hmm. end of a sweetness. Right? Yeah, Isn't nice that stuff. wild that it's that's really nice. that different from yeah. one to the other? Yeah. Okay, now let's go down into 100. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's all that's, that's like tangy. It's sugared hay. Yeah. Sugared hay. Well, it's, look, you know what's cool about this? As far as new makes go, I've had a lot Worse. Less enjoyable yeah. new makes than that. Now that you've tasted that and you recognize it in the new make, mm -hmm. remember when we've had that in bourbon? Remember when we've opened up a craft yeah. aged bourbon yeah. and found that? That's very common. That's because they've cut so low. Okay. Right? And there are things you just can't age out. Yeah. Okay. Queen's share. Queen's share, 139. Okay, so the top end of the queen's share. Now, technically, this is still bourbon. Mm -hmm. It's just a run made up of only faints or tails of Perfect. the second distillation for us. With the faint collection, mm -hmm. is it ever only just tails, or do they sometimes put the heads in there too? Get rid of the four shots. Both. And then, okay, so you can just do tails, or sometimes you can combine heads, heads and, and tails. tails. Yeah. Oh, that's light. Much more. And soft. But a lot more concentrated on the taste than I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. there's a lot more to it. It's a softer nose for sure. And even though this high end was 138 mm -hmm. bourbon. And this one's 139. Yeah, even though the 138 bourbon, that wasn't punching nearly as hard as you would expect from 138 proof. Right. This on the nose is punching even softer, mm -hmm. and on the taste, surprisingly concentrated and dense. Yes. Now let's jump to 120. 120 Queens. 
I, I get way more of that cut grass earlier on in this one. It's a more rich presentation of that sugared hay note. Again, and it's kind of bitter at the end. It's concentrated and rich and, okay, bitter at the end? Mm -hmm, just in the aftertaste. Oh yeah. You see what I mean? It doesn't leave you with a sweet finish as it mm -hmm. fades off into the distance. Gives you a little slap on the ass on the way out the door. Now let's move into the 100 proof queen's share. Okay. It tastes flat. It is kind of bland and flat. Comparatively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've had much more, much flatter whiskeys for sure. Yeah, but just sort of sweet and then a little papery. It reminds me of the smell when we have to rinse the filter on a Chemex. Oh, that white paper. That paper. Yeah, yeah the paper's smell. This is effectively a third distillation right. of the bourbon. What a lot of people do who use this method of a separate Queen's Faints tails only run yeah. is they will barrel it yeah. by itself, yeah, yeah, yeah. age it by itself. It rarely turns into the thing that you want to release. Okay. By itself, right? But it's a fun. but. Yeah. If you blend it with barrels of your other product, right. It can add in this characteristic that you're not gonna find from the heart cuts alone. So as a blending element, yeah, you can fill in gaps. Yes, you can add in something that you you want from effectively the tail run, mm -hmm. but without all the extra shit that comes along with the tails. Okay. Of all of these, mm -hmm. do you have a favorite of just the new make before anything else? Is done to it. Yeah, honestly, I gotta say, uh, halfway between these, uh, the two first two samples of the bourbon, yeah, the 138 and the 120, yeah, right in the middle somewhere is my favorite. I would say if I had to choose one, mm -hmm. it would be the top end of the 138 bourbon. Yeah, this is where it's the most obvious, rich, full-bodied set of flavors. Now, it was interesting that you weren't able to find the true history right. of the Queen Chair. Cause I did. After weeks of painstaking, historical, very legitimate research, I uncovered the truth of where the queen share came from. Oh, great. I, I think it requires a, a, a historical reenactment, if you'll help me. All right. I need you to go put on your most regal attire and meet me outside. I will do that. Look at this nerd. Look at these nerds hiding out in the corner. It's about this time we usually do a bit of shenanigans. Now. I think it's Emma's turn. Emma, 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 Emma. Hello, Emma. The first option is we shave Emma's head. Uh, the next option is Emma experiences what's behind the janky blue thing. Anybody that's been watching the content, watching the channel, she has stepped up in the last year in such an amazing way. Working behind the scenes, doing stuff that is, like, distillers would never in a million years think that was in their job description, and she is just making it happen, getting it done, so you guys can have some amazing whiskey. Emma, the queen of Crowded Barrel, you have your crown. Are you ready? If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us.
that drop in the <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> It's you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Daniel, you went out of the sun. Let's move you out of the sun. Yeah. Okay, so this is the morning before the episode comes out. Last week we had the Bastards Ball that you just saw. A lot of fun. And a little bit of a... A, little bit of a, a, bit of a, a development. Yes. And uh, we got word officially several hours ago. What's the, what's the deal? So I accepted a job at Balcona's Distilling to be a blending production assistant. And Daniel and I were talking about it. I was like, well, you know, that's unexpected. But I would only really be butthurt about it if it was a distillery less good than Balcona's. Yeah, like if it's just some little knucklehead startup trying to get their feet under them. I feel a little insulted. Like, what the, what the, what the, like, but Balcona's, it's yeah. like... It's like the Godfather coming in and saying, who, who did you whack to get that? Yeah, off? <laughs> yeah, that's actually a very. <laughs> so we're super excited for her. whenever this was, you know, she gave us a heads up uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And she said, hey, there's an opportunity that came up and immediately we were very supportive. We yeah. get it. It's an amazing distillery. And I'm going to take most of the credit <laughs> for you having this amazing opportunity. I'm sure that's fine. Yeah. Huh. All that bl blending you've trained her on over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am very excited mm. about this opportunity. About leaving us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you really want to step on every line. Do you want a second to write this down and think Maybe. about it? Yeah. Okay. Go um, ahead. I could not be happier to see you. <sighs> In the rear view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, incredibly bittersweet because mm -hmm. I love all of the opportunities that I've gotten to be a part of out here. And we have a really amazing crew mm -hmm. in that. Over and over, we've brought in more. So they hired me in March of 2018, and mm -hmm. we didn't even have a finished building yet. Yeah, we really didn't. <laughs> and over and over as we hired more and more people, we just got gold. I mean, mm. like we hit the jackpot and they've all been so amazing and great to work with. And I think that is what I will miss the most is the people and you guys um, meeting you guys here. But it just means you're adding a stop. When you come to visit Austin, <laughs> you're visiting Crowded Barrel. Wait a you minute, you can't chill for Balconis on our episode? <laughs> It's too soon. <laughs> so we could not be more proud of Emma. Uh, we wish her the absolute best. And uh, the team of Balconis is going to get an amazing person on their blending team. That's mm -hmm. where you're landing there? Yeah. On their blending team, of course. Mm -hmm. And she is going to help us finish out some of the things that she had started before she left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited so about for context, Waco is like an hour and a half? Yeah. Yeah, it's not terribly far. I'm trying really hard not to cry right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, that's good for the thumbnail. Do it now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Somebody Google sociopath. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So she has to run off. So this leads us to another conversation. Uh, we have a job opening. We're hiring. For a... I'm going to be doing it in the meantime, yeah. and that is not sustainable, my friends. <laughs> we have an email set up. It's hiring at crowdedbarrelwhiskey.com. Oh, yeah. Hey, Emma, yeah. name an animal. Whale shark. A whale, a whale shark? shark? A tune. Just put whale shark in the subject line for some reason and we all know that you saw this episode yeah and uh yeah we don't i mean resume is fine but mostly just like a little bit of a cover letter paragraph of why you think you'd probably be a good fit we'll get into more details for the applicants that we never done mm -hmm. so the biggest difference between being a distiller crowded barrel versus most other distilleries is you're gonna be working on very different projects. All the time. A lot. Yeah, and most other distilleries, you sort of have your range of core products, and then every once in a while you get to do some experimental batches. Right. But at Crowded Barrel, every batch is an experimental batch, except for the ones where we're like trying to scale up on some right. of the things we want more people to get. Uh, the world's first crowdsourced distillery, it very much is crowdsourced. Those projects are driven by what sounds like an interesting, fun project that people can vote on in the Patreon good job is going to be researching interesting votes and meaningful decisions for the MBs in the Patreon to make 
from whiskey project to whiskey project. So, yes, but while distilling. But while distilling. Yes, yes, while distilling. Yeah, yeah. So that means there's always going to be something new and interesting to work on, but it's batches to meet the demand of the MBs that are in the Patreon so we can make stuff that they voted on, get them the opportunity to get a bottle, yep. and then have fun. Don't be boring. If you're boring, just I can't even. Just be cool. Just be cool. If you got a shroom guy, or you oh, are a shroom, what? No, we can't have our distillers be people who are regularly shrooming. No, that's not, but it could be interesting. No. <laughs>